Before we begin with the topic relations and functions, I assume that you already have a basic understanding of sets, which are often called the language of relations and functions. If not, then I have already made a separate video where all these basics of sets are explained clearly and from scratch, and you can watch that first before continuing with this chapter. First, we begin with the idea of ordered pairs, because this is the basic building block of everything that comes next. Imagine one set contains amounts of money like $1 and $2, and another set contains bank accounts. Now suppose we make a pair of money and account, which tells us how much money is deposited into which account. Then the ordered pair of $1, and this account number means $1, is deposited into that account. But if you reverse the order and say account comma $1, it no longer represents the same action at all, because an account cannot be deposited into a dollar. Even though the same two things appear, reversing the order breaks the logic completely. This is the idea behind ordered pairs. Once ordered pairs are clear, we move to the next idea called the Cartesian product of two sets. Suppose you have two sets, one set called A and another set called B. Imagine set A contains days like Monday and Tuesday, and set B contains meals like breakfast and dinner. The Cartesian product, which we represent using A cross B, means we now form all possible ordered pairs, where the first element always comes from set A and the second element always comes from set B. So we pair Monday with breakfast, Monday with dinner, Tuesday with breakfast, and Tuesday with dinner and make a set out of it. Every day gets paired with every meal, without skipping anything. So you can think of the Cartesian product as a complete list of all possible connections between two sets, written using ordered pairs. Now we are ready to move to relations, which simply means how elements of one set are related to elements of another set. Mathematically speaking, a relation is a subset of the Cartesian product A cross B. This means we start with the Cartesian product and then select only some ordered pairs that satisfy our rule. Imagine set A contains the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and set B contains the numbers 1, 4, and 9. Now the Cartesian product will be the complete list of all possible ordered pairs formed by taking the first number from set A and the second number from set B like this. From this complete list, suppose we now define a relation by choosing only those ordered pairs where the second number is the square of the first. Mathematically, in the set builder form, we can write this relation R as A and B, where B equals A square. This represents all ordered pairs A and B. And then we have a rule or a condition which is the second number is the square of the first. So we select 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9, and we ignore all other pairs. This shows that a relation always comes from the Cartesian product, but it includes only those ordered pairs that satisfy a given rule, not necessarily all possible pairs. Now, every relation has three very important parts called domain, codomain, and range, and understanding these clearly removes a lot of confusion later. The domain is the set of all first elements of the ordered pairs in the relation. The codomain is the entire second set that was available to form the relation, whether all of its elements are used or not. The range is the set of those elements of the codomain that actually appear as second elements in the relation. Imagine set A contains the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and set B contains the numbers 1, 4, 9, and 25. Now we define a relation where each number from set A is connected to its square, but only if that square exists in set B. Following this rule, the ordered pairs in the relation are 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. The pair 4, 16 is not possible because, even though 4 has a square, the number 16 is not present in set B. 
So the domain for this particular relation is the set containing 1, 2, and 3, because these are the numbers from set A that actually have a connection in the relation. Notice that 4 is in set A, but is not in the domain because it is not present in the ordered pairs in the relation. The codomain is the entire set B, which contains 1, 4, 9, and 25, because this is the full set of possible outputs we were allowed to use. The range is the set containing 1, 4, and 9, because these are the numbers that actually appear as second elements in the relation. Awesome! Now note that relations can be shown in different representation forms to make understanding easier. In roster form, we simply list all ordered pairs of the relation like this. In arrow diagrams, elements of the first set are drawn on one side and elements of the second set on the other side, with arrows showing connections. So, for this relation, the arrow diagram will look like this. Then, in graphical representation, ordered pairs are plotted on a graph where the first element is taken along the horizontal direction and the second along the vertical direction. I think you are aware of such graphs. Each method gives a different visual view of the same relation, helping us understand it deeply and clearly. Then let's talk about the different types of relations, which is a very important concept, and also quite fun once you get the hang of it. First, we have the empty relation, which is a relation that has no pairs at all. Imagine set A contains the numbers 1, 3, and 5, and set B contains the numbers 7, 9, and 11. Now suppose we define a relation where a number from set A is connected to a number from set B only if the number from set A is even. Since all numbers in set A are odd, there is no number in A that satisfies the condition, so no ordered pairs can be formed. This is a perfect example of an empty relation. The sets exist, but the relation contains nothing. Next, we have the universal relation. The universal relation is a relation that includes all possible ordered pairs between two sets. Basically, if a relation is equal to its Cartesian product, then that relation is universal. Next is the identity relation, which is very simple. Every element is related to itself only. For example, if set A has numbers 1, 2, and 3, then the identity relation contains pairs like 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. Next up we have the inverse relation, which is just flipping the pairs of a given relation. So if in a relation X is related to Y, in the inverse relation Y will be related to X. For example, Imagine a relation where 1, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 4 are the ordered pairs. The inverse relation will simply flip each pair, so the ordered pairs become 2, 1, 3, 2, and 4, 3. This shows that everything is inverted, and it is still a valid relation. Now we move to relations that are more about patterns. A reflexive relation is a relation where every element of a set is related to itself. That means for every element x in the set, the ordered pair x, x must be present in the relation. Imagine set A contains the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Let us define a relation with the following ordered pairs. Here, you can see that these three pairs ensure the relation is reflexive because every element is connected to itself. At the same time, these two pairs are extra connections that do not affect reflexivity. They just add more relations. So a reflexive relation must include all self-pairs, but it can also have other pairs as well. Then a symmetric relation is a relation where if X is related to Y, then Y is automatically related to X. For example, imagine set A contains the numbers 1, 2, and 3 and the relation includes the ordered pairs 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 2. Here, every time a pair exists in one direction, the reverse pair also exists. 
This makes the relation symmetric. Then we have a transitive relation that is a little different. If x is related to y and y is related to z, then x must be related to z as well. Finally, when a relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive all together, it becomes an equivalence relation. Let us do one nice example. Consider the set of real numbers and define a relation where x is related to y if and only if x is less than y. First, this relation is not reflexive because reflexive means every element must be related to itself. But for any real number x, the statement x is less than x is false, since a number cannot be smaller than itself. Like 2 is not less than 2, so reflexivity fails. Next, this relation is also not symmetric because symmetry requires that if x is related to y, then y must also be related to x. But here, if 2 is less than 3, it does not mean that 3 is less than 2, so symmetry clearly does not hold. However, this relation is transitive because transitivity means that if x is related to y and y is related to z, then x must be related to z. This works here since if 2 is less than 3 and 3 is less than 4, then 2 is less than 4. Therefore, although the relation satisfies the transitive property, it fails to satisfy both reflexive and symmetric properties, and hence this relation is not an equivalence relation. A function is a special kind of relation where every element in the domain is connected to exactly one element in the codomain. In other words, each input has one and only one output, making functions very useful in mathematics. In the next video, we will dive into functions in detail, explore their types, and see how they are different from general relations. Making such videos requires a lot of time, effort, and planning. So if this explanation helped you, please like the video and share it with others who might benefit. If you want to support me even more and help me create more high-quality content, you can also become my Patreon. So good.